Good morning everyone, I'm Stephanie from Rabbitry and Yarns and in today's video we're going to show you the January Spinner Surprise. I'm holding in my hands part of it. This is our Angora. This is just very lovely, absolutely lovely American Angora. Um, beautiful crimp, just spins up very nice, not a lot of guard hair, absolutely great stuff. We have some naturally dyed merino roving. It is dyed by Diana from Angora Crafted and so she was able to whip this up for us. This is a beautiful kind of a soft, almost like a buttery color. It's, it's not bright at all. It just goes really well with the Angora, these two colors. They go great together. And of course, for the final pop, we have a bit of, um, a, bit of a blended bat. So this has a whole, that's the rooster. This has a whole bunch of different colors in it. We have a dark purple, yellow, we have orange, we have brown, uh, pink, and then there's a little bit of a nice um, lighter cream color as well. Let's get hand carding. So here we are, we have all of our fiber with us. Um, well actually this is missing about an ounce. So we only have about two ounces here. But what I would do is if you want to follow along with us, grab your Howard hand carters. These are 190 teeth per inch and they are great for making a nice blend of fine fibers. We're just loading this on. And then we're going to grab just a teensy bit of the colorful bat. So this has a little bit of purple, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange, a little bit of light pink, and a cream color. So we'll switch it to this leg so you can really see. So we'll just put that on. It doesn't have to be in any particular way. We just want this to add a little bit of color to the yarn. And because there's not a ton of this, and we have much more of this, we're not going to add this into every single roulet we make. Some will have it, and some will only be the blend of the Angora and the Merino roving. So this particular Rolex, we've blended twice. Now you can see just little light bits of color. We're not going for a super colorful, dramatic yarn. We want this to be half color and half pops, but we don't want it to be so dramatic that it is just completely overwhelming. That's the first one done. Let's keep going.
so we started around seven this morning with hand carding and right now I'm spinning it's around 11 this morning the Sun is out you can tell in the windows behind me it's definitely much brighter we have some hours to go so we're gonna stop actually and uh, go for a run a three-mile run at lunch here but then we're gonna keep spinning January's spinner surprise box okay so we finished spinning the final two ounces of our yarn and we are all hooked up and we're gonna go for our three mile run then we're gonna get all cleaned up and we're gonna show you how to make a center pull ball we're gonna ply the yarn wash the yarn dry the yarn and we'll be done with January's spinner spy surprise box we finished spinning all of the yarn it is a single and it is on the bobbin right now. We have our ball winder. It's kind of a makeshift setup. Normally what I would do is I would tape this center thing down and I don't have anywhere, any tape near me right now. So we're gonna get this started and we're gonna hope we can still find that center pole. So this is what you do. You're just literally winding and winding and winding and everything has to come off the bobbin completely. So you use your center pole ball winder, your ball winder to create that center pole ball. The center pole is this little thing right here. So this little end, this little tail, which is really hard to see there, you can kind of see it. That is what we don't want to lose because once you lose that in the center of your ball, it can become difficult to find. So that's why this is a little risky. We have some risky in business. But we just use this. Okay, so we've now created our center pull ball. There's two strings that come off it, one from the center, one from the side. And we've attached this just by tying it on to our leader line. So this is the little knot we just tied it on. And what what we are going to do now is we want it to start winding onto the bobbin and we're going to take this and create, we're going to ply it together and it's going to create a two ply yarn. So that's what we're doing. My tension's a little higher than I want to start out. So when you're doing the center pull, one of the things you don't want any like, you want your yarn to not be bunching up on itself when you're doing this. And so you wanna maintain a nice even, even strands coming from each side. So I normally try to take the ball, put it in my lap with the center pull section of string down, but sometimes it wants to flip back up. So this is the ball and the string that's coming from the center of it I set down, I keep my ball down like that. And then I help guide like this. I help guide, um, if that one arm gets out of the way, so I help guide kind of this string off the top. It's day two, it's morning, and we have finished plying. We are going to use our Nitty Knotty, and we're gonna take the yarn off of the bobbin. So this is kind of a strange angle. I need to move over. Um, the reason I need to move over is because it, this is not really attached to any hook. And if I start pulling this, it's not through the, um, the orifice right here. And if I start pulling this, there's a chance that it's going to get all tangled up in the bobbin. So um, when I'm pulling this, I need to pay attention to that. So using your knitting knotty is just over and over and over the same action, which I enjoy. I enjoy, and it's relaxing to have the repetitive over and over. If I do it correctly, apparently. And if I don't get my hair in there.
We've reached the end, so what I do is I take my string that I started with when I first started on the Nitty Knotty, and I just create a little loop that just secures it in place. This is attached to that leader line. This is where we put the knot in in the beginning. I just pull it off, and I do the same thing with this end. I just loosely attach it. So I don't put my figure eight knots in yet, typically. I'll wash it without them. Um, you can do it either way. So there we go, this is the finished yarn. So now we take it off the nitty knotty and it needs to be washed. So one of the best things is once you get this off the nitty knotty and you wanna see how well it's spun, if it doesn't spin back on itself, like this one's not spinning back on itself, then you've spun a balanced yarn. This is a balanced yarn. It is time to wash the yarn. We're gonna throw the skein we just spun in there and 100% Angora skein in there. All right, we have our yarn rinsed off. We have our nice warm fire going. This is the American Angora skein that we spun. It's a three ply. This is January's Spinner Surprise Fiber. We're just gonna put them on here and we're gonna let them dry.